Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today, I wanna show you how to mix bass in 10 minutes. That's right, we're continuing our mixing in 10 minute series. I wanna show you my favorite strategies and quick tactics to get a great bass sound in your mix fast. So here's a track, I'll play a smidge of it and we'll break down the bass part. I'm gonna show you uh, Four moves, three that are pretty common for me, and a fourth that is kind of like an extra fun one that you can add in there as well. Be still and know. Lord of hosts. Here's the bass. Right, so I just played this bass direct through my Avid 11 rack uh, through one of their bass amps. So it's, it's a solid starting sound. It's got clarity and punch and a little bit of low end. When it comes to bass, there are two really key moves that I go for. And one is it starts with EQ. And again, I'm using stock plugins here. But it's to emphasize the fundamental frequency, emphasize the fatness on your bass. And it's going to be a different frequency depending on your bass, uh, what string you played, what bass you played, whether it's a bass synth or a bass guitar or what amp. I mean, who knows? There's no real you know, number that matters, although it's probably between 50 hertz and 150 hertz. It's somewhere in there. And so you want to emphasize that. So I found that I thought this bass sounded really great at around 88. I gave it a little bit of a bump, 3 dB bump at 88 hertz. You also notice that I did a high pass filter on bass guitar, which some people say, why would you roll off low end on a low end instrument? Well, it's because I don't need ultra low end. I don't need anything below 32 hertz on this bass guitar. So I rolled off some low end, which opens up some headroom. So I find that I'm gonna fatten it up where it sounds sweet. But then I also like to scoop out where it sounds fake. So if I take all these off here, for example, and if I, I, I thought that it sounded really gross at 665, let's say. But let me boost it so you can hear what it sounds like. There's a little bit of that nasally sound in there. So I scooped that out. I scooped that out by like 4 or 5 dB, something like that. Uh, and then I added the low end, which I thought sounded fat. And then I like to do one more. I really like bass guitar that I can feel the finger plucking. So I'm looking for what mid-range frequency can I boost to get more of that bite. And in this case, I thought 1K sounded good. Um, so really, this is a, a, a dance between the boost at 1K and the cut at 660. They're close, so they're affecting each other, as you can see. But I think it adds a little bit of bite to it. So here's before the EQ and then after the EQ. Let me get to the chorus here before. When you take off the EQ, it's a little flatter, a little duller. Again, this isn't drastic. We're just really enhancing a little bit more of the frequencies that sound good and taking out the ones that don't. You will notice, if you're paying attention, I have turned the output down by about 2 dB to level match. What I want to do is make sure that I'm affecting the tone and not just the volume of the track with the EQ. Because boosts and cuts can throw off the volume, and it's not just simple math a lot of times. It depends on what frequency really resonates on that instrument. You know, the bass, it could be certain notes on the bass are louder than others and frequencies boost more than others, depending on what note you're playing. So I always just pull the output down or up to make sure that my output meter is matching my input meter.
There you go. Now, if your bass sounds like crap, your EQ is going to make a bigger difference than this. I feel like we had a good starting tone on the bass, but I've I've had bass guitar tones that are just crap. And so really cutting out more of the nastiness can clean up the bass. And that's really in key. So some of my bass frequencies might look like more cuts than boosts because I'm trying to get rid of the nasty frequencies that are either muddy or honky or just nasally. So you want to get rid of the bad frequencies, emphasize the good. Once I do that, I do some simple compression. I just started to play around with a three to one ratio, medium attack, medium release. And what you're doing with compression here on the bass is you're turning down the peaks. Because imagine a bass guitar, you pluck that bass, that's the highest peak. That's like the loudest transient. You see that little spike. And then the tone of the bass is the tail. And what we want to do with a compressor on a bass a lot of times is turn down the peak. So grab the peak with a fast enough attack, not too fast that you lose all the, the percussive element of it, but fast to medium. Turn down those peaks to be closer to the level of the, the tail. And then you use the makeup gain to turn everything back up. So in essence, we're fattening up the tail. We're turning up the tone of the bass to match the pluck of the bass, and that gives you more sustain. So if we go to the top of this riff, hear how the bass guitar sounds a little more cut off here versus It's like do dum 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 dum, but with the compressor, it's like da da dum dum dum. Longer sustain, longer tail. We perceive that as a fatter bass. That that's usually when you're looking for fatter bass, and you have such a dynamic instrument like a bass guitar, unless it's totally squashed and distorted, which in that case there is no dynamics to it. Then a compressor can make a big di big difference because if you look, if you zoom in here, and look at this is a good example here. Right, this little guy, that's the pluck, and then this tail is getting turned down. So if we can use a compressor to turn down this pluck a little bit and then turn everything back up, this tail gets louder. It's like this section increases in volume to better match the top of the bass pluck. And that creates some consistency within a pluck, within a note, but it also creates consistency among notes. We've got a big fat note here. And these are a little quieter. Do do. Turn the compressor on. They're more similar volume. And this is really important in a mix when the bass is getting lost. If you find that the bass is getting swallowed up or lost in certain notes, a compressor can really help. So, so far, very simple stuff here. We've done EQ and compression. Second, or third, I should say, is if you have any kind of distortion, use it. I happen to record this bass in parallel through a sans amp, so I actually have it distorted. But what you can do is also do this with a sans amp plugin or a virtual amp plugin where you literally copy the bass, put a distortion plugin on it, make sure there's no phase issues, and then blend the distorted bass in with the regular bass to create some little grit, some uh, upper mid grit. So here's before. Turn it up for you. Here's what the sans amp sounds like by itself. And what you can do is you can even EQ this bad boy, roll off any low end because you don't need the low end from it. Get more bite.
And then we can mix that in with the bass here. Kick it off. Clean, but add some grit. And what this does is add some harmonics and some distortion that is great for your bass when you're playing it through crappy small speakers like your iPhone or your laptop where they can't, those speakers can't represent and reproduce bass frequencies or low frequencies, but you still need to hear the notes and perceive the notes. So giving more mid-range bite, and you saw me do it with the EQ boost around 1K, and then now with some distortion in parallel allows you to allow the bass to cut through on smaller speakers. So I like to use distortion if I can together. And then finally, a little fun trick, and I'll turn the distortion one off for a second, is uh, reverb. So in this case, I'm using a send uh, to send it to some reverb, and the reverb is the air reverb that I showed you on the drum mixing video using the drum room preset. I really like that preset for a lot of things. I'm also EQing after that preset, by the way. I'm rolling off top end and low end, so it's a little warmer sounding. Uh, but what I'm using is, is a send to send a little bit of the bass into that reverb so it gets a little bit of width. Up the middle. Stereo. mono. So what this does, and I learned this from Jakir King, is it gives you a little bit of width on the bass while keeping the bass primarily up the middle, but it fattens up the bass, gives you a little bit more signal, a little bit more width. So really the bass can come a long way. So we go from where it, well, we'll start with everything in together with the bass and then we'll take it all away. I'm just going to increase this up a bit more here. Some automation I have on there. go those are my favorite moves on mixing bass get that eq right to clean it up get more bite then compress it to sustain and create more fatness and more consistency parallel distortion to give a little bit of grit and sizzle so that the bass is picked up on smaller speakers and a little bit of room reverb to give it a bit of stereo width if you want more mixing training i want to give you my checklist. I have a mixing checklist that walks you through the eight-step process for how I tackle and approach an entire mix, not just one instrument, but the entire mix. It's my eight-step mixing checklist, and I'm going to give it to you free. The link's below the video here, or just go to mixingchecklist.com. I'm also going to throw in a bunch of multi-tracks for a song that you can download these stems, import them into your own DAW of choice, and start practicing your mixing on this song, and a couple of bonus videos on how I think about mixing versus mixing mastering just to help you out when you get started or improve on your mixing journey. And before I go, leave me a comment below and let me know what is your favorite bass mixing tip. Is there a plugin you use? Is there a strategy that you use that you love to get the right bass sound for your music every single time? I'd love to hear it. Leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It means a ton. Hope you're staying healthy and safe and enjoying your musical week. I'll see you on another video real soon.